Okay, the next project is to change the track. And uh, that's really not too hard of a project. It's broken down into a couple parts. First is on this side of the sled. We'll take the muffler off and the sensor. We'll take the battery off and the brackets for the battery. We'll take the chain case cover off and the chain and the gears. Um, then uh, we'll go to the other side of the sled and we will take off the um, cover for the brakes, we'll take off the bolts for the brake caliper, we'll take off this cover here, slide everything out of the way. Then what we'll do is tip it up on its, uh, or undo the uh, back bolts here. And you need a 22 millimeter uh, wrench to hold the capture nut on the back. And then we'll undo the bolts in the front. Then we'll tip it up on its side and um, slide the suspension out, the R-Motion suspension out. And then we will pull the brake caliper assembly off of the drive shaft and then wiggle the drive shaft out. There's really not that much to it. So we will start over here on this side with getting all these things over here out of the way. Okay, the first thing is get the muffler off. So we need to take Battery and brackets next. Here. Don't lose track of where the ground wire goes. And also the star washer to hold that from loosening. And on the back side, there's just a bolt. And then inside, we have another uh, ground wire with. Now, if you have to, take a picture of this before you take it apart um, so you won't have any issues. So, now the last couple things to do before we take the chain cuts up is you know, make sure that you have a bucket under to catch the oil because you're obviously going to lose all the oil. Undo the uh, speedometer pickup, loosen all your 10 millimeter bolts and then you can tip the cover and fish it up out of the way and then we'll get to the chain case stuff inside after that if that's the next piece. Okay next is taking the chain and gears off. The easiest way to do this or the, the easiest order is lock your brake and then Get on this with a 15 millimeter wrench because it's super tight. Skidoo puts a boatload of uh, their yellow Loctite on it. So crack it and then you can get it off with a, a socket or a wrench or whatever you want. And then the next thing is to loosen the 17 millimeter nut and back off your chain tensioner. You don't have to back off all the way, but back off enough so you can shake the chain tensioner out. Then you're going to need a good pair of snap ring pliers, something like these. Um, this is a ratcheting pair, they're pretty darn rugged. You're going to need a good pair to get this snap ring off or you'll never get it off. Um, so once you have that snap ring off and the upper and lower bolt off and the bottom off, then you can take off your chain and gear assembly. Um, so now we move to this side. We took the belt off because there's no sense. Not taking any chances spilling anything on it or hitting with the tool or cutting it plus it gives us more room to get in here. So the belt guard has to come off that has four T25 bolts in it and the disc brake guard uh, has three T27 bolts in it. So that's the next step to take off. Okay so both covers are off. Um, the next step is to take out the four suspension bolts. If you want to make it a tiny bit easier, you can loosen your axle bolts and then loosen your adjusters up to let the axle slide forward. Um, the back on the arm motion, you need the screw tool for the um, 22 millimeter um, so that you can hold the capture nut on the back. 
Uh, or you can grind one. Uh, these just be thin like this so they'll never fit. Or you can take a three quarter inch sock, a wrench which is close enough, and the same thing, grind it paper thin so you can get it up behind there to hold the capture that. And then it's a 16 millimeter bolt in the front. And uh, again, Skidoo puts a ton of Loctite on there. So if you have air tools, you can get it right off. If you're doing it by hand, you might have to heat it up a little bit to um, loosen the Loctite, but honestly, I really don't um, like doing that. I don't like getting heat near any uh, bearings or seals or paint or anything else. So I just put an air wrench on it and it comes right off. And in the front, you have uh, 16 millimeter on the front, 17 millimeter to hold it on the back. So undo the back two first and then the front two. So that's the next step. Just take all four of those bolts out. Okay, all four bolts are out. I took the back ones out first and the front ones. Um, now you want to go around and make sure that you didn't leave anything that's going to fall out. Um, look on this side. On this particular sled, um, there's a spacer on the upper gear. So take that off. Um, the race sleds, the spacers are different. Reverse, mechanical reverse is more parts. But as you take all that stuff out, just lay it off somewhere all in order. And uh, take some pictures as you go so you can put it back in order. It's really not that challenging. Um, then we have our two bolts off on this side. Now the next thing we'll do is tip the sled over onto this stand just made with plumbing parts. And basically it just pushes in the hole at the top of the steering post like that, which Skidoo has on all of their XP and up sleds. Um, and it's just tall enough so it clears the side of the sled so that the mirrors and the side panel and all those things won't hit. And then on the back of the sled, I'll put down a piece of foam on the ground like that so that the back of the edge of the tunnel here will rest on the foam and I won't get anything scratched and I'll tip it up on its side. Um, so that's the next step. Okay, so I um, put a 4x4 four four block under the edge of the bumper with the pad on it to get a little more height out of this because it really has to swing out or you'll never be able to get it out. Then basically, if you step on the tunnel and do a little wiggling, you can get the back out and then it will pivot out. Okay, now that the suspension's out of the way, we have a few things to do over here. Um, basically, you have to lift up the safety clip um, for the brake caliber uh, pad bolt. Lift that up, take it out. Then you gotta undo the Allen wrench right there, the Allen bolt for the brake pads. Then you'll drop and pull both brake pads out. And then the next thing to do is loosen the four um, bolts to hold the caliper housing onto the frame. There's four of them. If you, you have to spin the drive shaft to get enough space to get all four of them out. So that's the next step. Okay, so all our bolts are out. The next two things is to take this big snap ring off and uh, unlock the capture nut retainer ring that these four bolts were tightened into. Basically there's two tabs that it grabs on the tunnel and locks. If you look down in behind there, that's the locking tab. So if I just give it a little tap so that it's like loosening it counterclockwise from the back side, it will, uh, it will unlock. I'll just give it a little, I'll just give it a little tap here and there's an opposite one on the other side and it just uh, loose. Okay, so the clip is off and if you look down in the tunnel, um, you don't see the tabs anymore because basically, you know, we um, pushed it down to unlock it off that little recess that it was locked on. You can see where it would come through and go up and, and lock on that little recess, which then gets all the bolt holes aligned and uh, do that and then now it's dropped back and it's it's loose 
on the back side, this is it right here. And you can see the uh, the little tab that grabs the slots in the frame and the capture nuts all built into this because you need that off. Okay, now the next step is the brake caliper assembly is um, pressed onto the bearing and we need to walk that off of there. There's a couple different ways to do it. Skidoo makes a tool for it, um, which I have, which makes it a heck of a lot easier. Um, but I'll get you and show that. Okay, so this tool is a two-part tool. One is a slug, a slug of metal that fits in there so I can tighten this bolt down. But you can see the little tabs on this. Basically, they fit through the slots in the rotor. And if you just pull up on the drive shaft now because you undid it from the chain case side, so it will lift way up, um, the drive shaft will. And you can fit this in and you turn it and it grabs the uh, two of the mounting posts. You can see that, how it grabs them. And you'll grab one on the other side. Then as I tighten this bolt, it will walk it off per Okay, and with the tool, it's very easy to lock it steady and walk the disc right off of there and, the, and also the uh, brake caliper assembly and without causing any damage. And this will work even on rusty ones. Now, if you want, you can fabricate a tool or, you know, what people do sometimes is take the plastic out. I can tell you if you mar up these splines at all, you'll never get this uh, disc brake on or off. They cannot be marred up at all. Okay, the first steps of getting the track back in are to lay it out so the arrows go in, direct, in the direction of travel. Uh, capture nut ring up in tight and get the tabs. Um, here's the tab. Get them to come up through the hole and then lock them. So one tab is wider than the other. This is the skinnier tab, that's the wider tab down at the bottom. Um, so and get everything all square. Uh, the caliper goes on real easy. There's no, you don't want to hit it or damage the splines at all. Um, so once you get everything all square, you can get start getting it on down there enough to get the holes aligned and get your four bolts um, started. Okay, once it's all seated in there straight and the disc is on good, get your C-clip back on. I usually like to, once the C-clip's on, it looks like it's on right, I usually like to give it a couple taps. Make sure it's seated in there nice and tight and it all looks right. Okay, when you're putting it back together, make sure that you Tighten the caliper bolts, the four caliper bolts, in a crisscross pattern. And okay, so the next part of the change of the track is to get the arm motion suspension back in, which is the biggest pain. So the axle has been slid all the way forward and tightened, and the springs are off the spring retainers. So now, in theory, we can rest it in here, swing it up, get this bolt in first. So the idea to get this in is to make sure axle slid up, slid all the way forward, so the springs are undone. And then you can wrestle it in, get up into the front, um, get it aligned, drop in your first bolt, wiggle it up and down a little bit, pushing the bolt from the back side. And now the front suspension is done. Now we'll get this bolt aligned, which is a heck of a lot easier with the springs undone. Um, SC5, you don't have to do all this, but the R motion, unless you take a ratchet strap and pull it down and come up with some creative way, it's impossible to get this aligned in there. Um, so this is kind of how I trace to do it.
the sleds back down and all four suspension bolts are in holding it in. You have to go around and tighten them up and torque them all up. So you have the front two with 16 on the front, 17 millimeter lock nut on the back. Most things do torque down. No lock tight on those because you have a lock nut. Uh, the back ones, of course, have the tons of two yellow lock tight on them to start with. And you can also put some blue lock tight on those. Tighten those up. So get all four four of those, all four corners done. Okay, next step on this side is to get the chain and the gears back in it. So on this particular model, the bottom sprocket's just held on with a big snap ring. Up top, I'm going to have a spacer, the gear, and then a bolt with the Skidoo's yellow Loctite, or you can put blue Loctite on it. And then slide on the chain tensioner. Um, so that's the next couple things we'll put in there. Okay, before putting your chain case cover on, Again, make sure your bottom clip is seated all the way in, all the way around. Make sure you've tightened your upper bolt. Make sure your chain case tensioner is pushed tight against the um, back, against the cover. I mean, sorry, against the uh, chain case. And then you want to finger tighten this bolt. Make sure your nut's backed off enough um, so that when you finger tighten it, um, your nut doesn't bottom out first. So just finger tighten it. Once it's finger tight, Hold it with a Allen wrench and tighten your 17 millimeter so that the bolt doesn't go in anymore. And then you'll see when it's um, finger tight, it's it's actually you know pretty snug. Um, and that's just finger tight. And then you could go ahead and put your cover on next. Tighten your cover bolts in a crisscross pattern. Uh, do it by hand so you don't over tighten them. Um, they basically all get snugged up and tightened, and you'll see the cover will close tight. Um, and that's as tight as you tighten them. If you try to use any kind of air tools or electric tools, it's very easy to strip them. If you tighten them by hand in a crisscross pattern until it's all snug, um, I've never stripped one. So that's the next step. Okay, make sure when you put the snap ring on that it actually snaps down into the groove, and then you can take it and um, just tap on the, uh, the edges of the snap ring and make sure it's seated in there correctly and um, make sure you see it snap right down in the groove and then of course you can just grab the chain a little bit and just apply a little tension um, on the chain and the gear just a tiny bit and if this snap ring isn't on all the way it'll just walk right off and that makes a super mess of everything if that's not seated right um, so make sure the snap ring definitely goes down into the groove tight and snaps Okay, so now the cover's all back on. All the board bolts are torqued to 89 inch-pounds. This particular chain case on this sled takes about 250 milliliters or cc's of chain case fluid. Um, you put it in, you know, pop this uh, cover off, fill it through there, and then put the cover back on. Uh, make sure you don't uh, cut it or tear it with a screwdriver. Um, and basically, if you take the magnetic uh, fill plug off, and fill it till it comes out of there. That's 250 milliliters. On the uh, four-stroke 1200s, it's 500 milliliters, and uh, the plug is up higher on the side of the chain case. And uh, with so many different models now, um, you really should look up and make sure you're putting in the right amount. Uh, you know, 250 or 500 is going to probably cover most of the models. Um, so now the the next step is to get the um, battery. And all the electrics back together um, so we'll do that okay the battery case is a little more complicated on the uh, four strokes especially with the electronic or electric reverse uh, but the two strokes is pretty easy um, so just make sure you have your ground wire on here and on uh, all of them the star washer goes against the aluminum so two bolts down here with our ground inside we have our other ground wire with our uh, star lock washer against the aluminum and we have our shorter bolt over here so it doesn't come in too far to the uh, battery box and um, that's basically it and then we just have the one bolt left with the large washer to um, close the battery box once we put the battery in and get our negative and positive hooked up so we'll do that next okay batteries all in uh, on this side there's just the one on the on the positive but make sure if there's another wire that they both go under your bolt or negatives on. Um, 
battery is all tight and snug. Um, speedometer pickup is plugged in. Next step is putting on the suitcase um, muffler. The big thing with these is to make sure that the bracket on it goes over the rubber stopper on all the models. Sometimes there's two. Make sure it goes over it. Make sure it gets down in the hole um, completely and make sure it's over your pipe and uh, your gasket is still there. You have some play in the pipe so you can move it around to get what you need. And then we'll put on our four springs on this one. One, two, three, four. So that's the next step. And I will also on this one put on our uh, pipe temp sensor with our locking ring. Okay, you want to make sure that all four springs are caught on well, that the frame bracket is up and over the rubber tab, and the pipe is definitely down through the hole. And you want to do that on uh, all of them. Uh, especially the four strokes, it's easy to miss that hole. And then we've put our um, cover strap back on and hooked our cover on. So now we're ready to close this side and move to the final stages of the track change. And slide your brake pads back up in, put the brake pad retainer in, torque that bolt, put the safety clip back on it. Okay, so brake cover's back on with the stud on underneath, then the three bolts, and then the belt guard is back on that protects broken belts from taking out your uh, brake caliper and not being able to stop in the emergency that a broken belt is already going to create um, so all four of those bolts are is done so the uh, you know the brake stuff is all done you want to go back and double check make sure you miss anything there get your drive belt back on make sure you pay attention to the rotation on it Put all your tools back away, put your side cover back on. Um, so now our four bolts are done. Our, um, this side is buttoned back up. So the only thing left is to set your track tension. So loosen the 16 millimeter bolts a little bit on your axle. And then you can tighten this 10 millimeter on both sides evenly to set your track tension so that when it's raised off the ground, the uh, most uh, late model BRP sleds, the spec is an inch and three sixteenths to an inch and three eighths with 16 pounds of pressure pushing down on the loosest part of the track and measuring from the top of the clip to the bottom of the Hyfax. Um, and also try to make sure it's perfectly centered so when you lift it up you have an equal distance between the edge of the track clip and the side of the Hyfax on both sides. Now once you get that done, lock your axle nuts and uh, that's it, your track adjustment, I mean sorry, your track replacement is done.